don't know where to look actually, that are, uh, uh, that are watching from wherever they are in the world today, have a great time with us this morning. Um, I think most of you know that I grew up in church um, from being born, me and my sister, and if you don't know, Angela's my sister, and Faith who plays the keyboard is my sister as well. In fact, they're twins, just in case you didn't know. So uh, we've all been brought up in church to grow up from being born, I think. So I think I've been at church every Sunday for the last... 70 years. 70 years. <laughs> I'm not 70 yet, I've got a few weeks left yet. Um, so we've been at church and we've, we've, through them years we've learned so many different songs. As you can imagine, each, year, each time there's been choruses when we were little. We know so many choruses when we were little. As we got older we learnt more and more and more and more songs and hymns. It was hymns for a long time, now it's more choruses and we've learnt so many different things. But you know, every so often one comes back into your mind. And this week the one that came in my mind is from the 80s. And it was, with a clean heart I'll praise you. With a pure heart, I'll honour you. With the right spirit within me, I'll magnify your name. I'll magnify your name. I'll magnify your name. With a heart that's full of love for me, for you, not for me, I will magnify your name. And that was in my mind all this week, singing it in my head. I woke up with it in the night. And, and it's just one of them songs. I thought, right, I've got to come to God this morning with that pure heart, with a clean heart. And I've been reading um, Exodus and Leviticus, which are very heavy books, and they're full of um, all... Of, um, I put, I put, what do I call them? I forgot what I call them now. Anyway, we, we, lots of things that, that we, we couldn't... Sorry, my mind's gone blank now. You have to excuse this a minute. Um, the things that... Uh, reading in Leviticus, it was... They couldn't just come before God and say they were sorry. They had to go through a big list of things before they could come before God and say they were sorry. They had to... Uh, I'm going to just read you one, a very simple one. It's in um, Leviticus. He says, The Lord spoke to Moses, If a person sins and commits a trespass against the Lord by lying to his neighbour, by what was delivered to him for safekeeping, or about a pledge, or about a robbery, if he's exhorted from his neighbour, or if he has found what was lost and lies concerning it, if he swears falsely in any of these things that a man can do, which he sins, then it shall be, it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty. He shall restore what was stolen, or the things that which he has exhorted, or what has been delivered to him for safekeeping or the lost thing which he found, all of which these were sworn falsely. He shall restore its full value, add one-fifth more to it, give it to whoever it belongs, on the day of the trespass offering. He shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord, a ram without blemish from the flock, with, with your valula valulation, valulation of the trespass offering to the priest. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord, and he shall be forgiven for any of those things that he may have done in which he has trespassed. That's just a very simple one. All he did was told lies. He went and said he was sorry, but he still had to come before God, before the high priest, and bring him around. He had to be killed before he could be forgiven his sins. And it's, it's full of them. It's a lot of burnt offering, grains offering, sin offerings. It's, in them days, they couldn't just come before God. And this morning, I would just, as I was reading that, I was thinking, we don't have to do any of that anymore. We can just come straight into his presence this morning. In fact, you're here in God's presence already. He's here already with you. You don't have to do anything other than bring him your clean heart, your pure heart. He made a new covenant when he died on the cross for us. When Jesus died, he took, we forget all that now. We've got a new covenant with us. All we have to do is come before him this morning with that clean heart, the pure heart, to magnify him this morning. Um, it says it in Psalm, it says, with creating me a clean heart, O God. It says in Matthew, um, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. It's, it, it's, it's all in the scriptures all the way through. All we have to do now is bring our hearts before him, our clean hearts. And if, your heart, if this morning you've got something in there, you think, well, that's not quite right yet. All you've got to do this morning is say to God, while we're praying, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Just cleanse my heart again. I want a clean heart before you this morning, a pure heart. And that's all God's asking of you today. We sang that song, didn't we? We sing it a lot now, about bring your addictions, bring your worries, bring your cares. That's what he wants you to do this morning. Bring your worries, bring your cares. <coughs> bring your things to me for you, before him this morning. And as we pray, just ask him to just clear that thing from your heart this morning, the worries and the anxieties and give you that clean heart and a heart that you can now praise God as we sing together this morning. He just wants you to praise him this morning and thank him Amen. for that covenant he made when he died on that cross. We're going to celebrate it later that Jesus died for us to take away all the sins that we've ever done. And it really blessed me this week when I was reading that, that we don't have to do any of these things anymore. We don't have to bring any offerings before God this morning. And also, they couldn't even go in God's presence. They had to, the high priest had to do it. This morning, we can personally come here this morning in God's presence and just worship him this morning. So let's just pray. <coughs> just want to thank you all this morning that we are here in your presence. 
You said you'd be here with us, Lord, and we just thank you that we can come with our hearts clean and pure before you this morning and tell you that we love you. Lord, we just pray for anybody that's got any worries, any anxieties, any, <coughs> anything that they think is, is blocking their time to worship you this morning. We just pray that you'll just help them to, to take it away from this morning, Lord, and let them give it to you, and that you, Lord, will be able to clean and just prepare them, Lord, to worship you this morning, Lord. We just thank you that we have such a great God. God, who loves us, loves us just as we are. And we just thank you, Lord, that we have, once we've given our lives to you, Lord, that you are just constantly with us, Lord, take care of us, looking after us. And we just praise you this morning that we have such a great God, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your presence with us today. Thank you, Lord. So we're just going to sing this morning. We're going to worship. I don't know what songs. We're going to do it a bit different today. We're going to sing a couple of songs, and then Bob's going to share with us. So Sunday school will be able to go up after the couple of songs, and then they'll come back down later for communion. Okay. Thanks for that joy. We've got a lot of reasons to come and worship the Lord today, so why don't you stand and join us? Did Carl not tell you to stand? Did you not tell him to stand and praise God this morning, Carl? We're really excited to praise God. We're going to raise a hallelujah and praise his name.
Thank you, Lord, that there is power when we praise your name. And I want to encourage you all this morning that if you are, just need a touch from God, if you need the power of God just working in your life, praise him this morning. Just come before him, lift up your voice, sing, praise his name. Thank you, Father God. going to do a new song now. 
holy forever. I did share it on the WhatsApp group a couple of weeks ago. We've been playing it around, uh, so we please remain standing and just join in. It's a really simple uh, song, but really powerful. Thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them all and the angels cry oh, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. If you've been forgiven, and if you've been ready, Sing the song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Well, sing the song forever and amen, and the angels cry. creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever hear your people say holy to the king of The greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and possessions, your name stands above them all. Your name, your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name.
Exactly. Holy is the Lord this morning. It's fantastic. Um, Sunday school are going to go out now, and I don't know if there's the older one. Yeah. All right. The older ones are going upstairs this way. Noah. And then when we've after Bob spoke, then we'll let you know and then come back down for communion afterwards. Okay. Okay, let's just pray. We thank you this morning, Lord, for your presence with us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can just sing holy. Mm. Holy are you, Lord, this morning. Lord, and as Bob speaks this morning, just pray you'll just, um, you know, it's going to bring a word from his heart from you, Lord, this morning. We just pray that we'll just really mm. listen, Lord, and mm. let it really speak to our hearts today. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Morning. Made a decision this morning that um, that I'd speak now rather than doing it the so I made a decision to kind of slightly change the format. Peter's told me he's made a decision today <coughs> that he's chose his next car, <laughs> Kia. You've all made a decision this morning. You've made so many decisions. I'm going to talk about decision. Give you a guess that already? You've already made so many decisions today that you don't really realise just because you've all decided to, well, um, well, Joy came up, I was upstairs in the office, in church office this morning, Joy came up and stood there, and so she decided to wear that dress, and she thought, oh, looked through the wardrobe and made a decision to wear that dress. Anybody else made any decisions that you'd like to confess to this morning or this morning that you made, like you, you, uh, you looked through there? Nev, what did, did, did you decide to make Catherine a nice cup of tea this morning when you go up? Or? Every morning. It's every morning. <laughs> yeah. Who made the Yeah, Kath made the decision that you'd make the decision. <laughs> Anyone else? Can I, what, what, what would you say? Yeah. So, so you, you, you <laughs> you know decisions 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 you know we make them all the time and the decisions that you make mostly and there are exceptions mostly determine the decisions that you make mostly determine what you do where you go, who you would meet, and who of you have said, I made a decision to go to a certain place and I've spent the rest of my life with the person who I met there. <laughs> and if I hadn't decided to go there, I might not have met them and my whole life would have been a completely different course and a different pathway. I know Peter's got a story about that as well, but I'll, you can you know, ask him about it later. <laughs> you make decisions where you work. Or you make a decision about what work you'd like to do, or you apply for, or you train to do. You make decisions where you live. And you can make certain decisions, and I, I, wrote, I wrote a couple of people's names. You can make a decision, or you do something, and that decision can make you very wealthy. Like when Mr. Zuckerberg thought he'd put up, open something up in his university and call it something like something face or something. It, it kept, went on to be something he's made him very wealthy or maybe Mr. Bezos thought, I know what, I could sell books and, uh, you know, and, and then, oh, I could do this and that it's made him, you know, or Mr. Musk decided he'd make an electric car. And uh, where, where, you, where you live or where you end up, or who you bump into, decisions. I, it's just mind-boggling. It gets to the point where you just go, I can't really take all of this in. But, uh, well, we, we just spent a, a week in Cyprus. And I have to be careful me because I, I could get myself in trouble because um, we hired a car and a, a lady brought the car and, and she was obviously not English. So I, I said, uh, oh, you know, she told me a few things and I said, oh, right, you know, are you from Cyprus? Because I was asking, I said, no, I'm Russian. 
She said, but I've lived here 22 years. And I, oh, right. So you think, wow, what happened in her life to make her make a decision? And now she lived, she's lived in Cyprus for 22 years. Uh, and then there's uh, just another incident. You know, you walk down the corridor to the restaurant, and this, this lady just greeted I don't talk to ladies all the time, by the way, but, but <laughs> <laughs> Joy was with me. <laughs> but this really nice, cheery lady said, oh, hi, when Joy, you see, did every night, didn't she? She was there. And that, and so I was saying, and I just said, oh, it's been so nice. Last day we're going home today, you know. And I said, are you from Cyprus here? No, no, I'm Polish. <laughs> but I've lived here 15 years. And, and all I'm saying is that decisions sometimes that you make that, that, that determine the course of life. So somebody, she may have gone on holiday, you know. I, you hear this quite often, don't you? You go on holiday, you meet someone, you finish up, you know, uh, Go and live in there, basically. What about the worst decision you've ever made? Um, I'm sure if I say what's the worst decision you've ever made, you know, you ponder through it and you think, hmm, uh, and, I, and I, I, I don't know. Um, what's, or, or, like, what's the best decision you've ever made? My mum used to say the best decision I ever made is, is asking Joy out. <laughs> best girl you've ever, ever married. I was just thinking about this too, you know, that... Uh, Sometimes things happen, uh, and, well, I remember Andy Murray being told by his mum that he, he, that he d- decided to give him a tennis racket, and he said, hey, he's pretty good at that. And somebody made a decision that handed you something that determined the course of your life as well. Ed Sheeran started singing. In fact, here's, here's a good question. Who knows where Ed Sheeran started to sing in, and it wasn't busking in the streets, he was already singing. W- w- who knows where Ed Sheeran first sang? In church. When he was four. He started singing in church, and suddenly said, hey, go, go, voice him. And that, that kind of boy got a guitar, and, and it... You have got up today and decided, I'm going to church today. You're all here today. And I'm glad that you made that decision that you're here today in church and I believe that God's got something to say to us as we're all here today in church. I'd like to just point out too that sometimes small decisions or seen inconsequential decisions can end up being crucial decisions. Can be something that you might not have led you to the point that you finally end up at. Also, I mean, in, in, before I go further, also there are certain situations that happen that, that lead, leave us no choice in the decision that we have to make because it's maybe something that's happened or a situation or someone else has done something and it's left you with a difficult decision to make. But you know, the more about this you think, the more complicated it could get. But anyway, since we're here in church today, let's talk about decisions and church and stuff like that and how, how it impacts and how it reflects and how it works in in our lives because I really believe this that we're not here by chance you know that you make a decision but I really believe that God really impacts into our thinking into our understanding that helps us to form the decisions and that decision for you to be here today I believe is something that God has led inspired or or brought to your attention and made you find yourself sitting here in our church today and I believe that God has a specific purpose and reason for each one of us to be here to speak to us and maybe some decisions that we will make in the days ahead will transform the things that God would do in our lives. I believe that God's got a plan for each of our lives and I really believe that he wants to speak into our hearts and into our minds and into our understanding and hear the message that God has for us today. I really believe that um, that through Jesus, and I'm going to just jump back a little bit here, okay? I really believe that the message of Jesus that came into this world, who came into this world to reinstate our relationship with his Father in heaven, which had been broken through sin, I really believe that that message is a clear message, but it's a free message for people to hear and decide for themselves, what they do with that message. When you hear it, 
and you consider and you decide. And so there are many, many people that will say, what? What a load of nonsense. When they hear the message of Jesus, and I couldn't put it any better than how it says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And it says, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God, as the scripture says. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world to look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Greeks, so it is foolish to the Jews who ask for the signs from heaven, it's foolishness to the Greeks who seek human wisdom, and so we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all a load of nonsense. When, uh, when people talk about God and Jesus and, and this, this subject, people say, no, it's a load of nonsense. I watched a, a debate last night, uh, and it was from, uh, uh, it was from a, an atheist, uh, and it was from a, from a, 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 a guy who, who a, a Christian guy. And there were 3,000 people in this auditorium, and they said there was, there was people watching around the world. Uh, and they had this great debate, and they were trying to bring people to a decision. And that, so the guy who was the atheist, the atheist guy, wanted to, people to decide that it was a lot of nonsense. And then the Christian guy wanted people to listen to what he said and decide that there was something in it, that there was something of a truth in it. And... and this is what the, uh, the Christian guy wanted to, to, to demonstrate. He, he said that, I want you to consider that this message is true and the Bible is true and what God says is true. And then this happens. In his 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it said, For God said, let there be light in the darkness and made his light to shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that this great power is from God and not from ourselves. So basically what, what the, what's happening there is that they're, they're being presented with, it, with, a, with a, a situation and you decide. And they decide which you're going to, to accept or reject. And, and the, the guy made, the, the atheist guy, made a very, very strong case. I've got to say he made a strong case. For, for people, and so when they hear that, they could go, yeah, that makes sense, you know, that, that God, God couldn't have made this world, and there isn't a God, and there's this, and 99.9% of the species, I can't, I, it actually, so much of it started to go over my head, it's, they're, they're all so, you know, so deep into this, and, and they're, they're all experts in philosophy, and stuff like that, and they quote this person, and they quote that person, and that, and at the end of it, you go, oh, well, 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 what should I decide? What should I decide? What should I decide? Well, I, I think that I might be preaching meant to the many of the converted here today, but I'm sure that each of us here today can say this, that I heard something and, and I decided, I decided that I'm going to listen to a little bit more of this because something's happening. Something very special is starting to happen. My experience is this. Uh, well, I grew up in church, you know, but, but I really felt that, that, uh, that uh, you know, there was a time when I went away from church and I didn't, I didn't want anything to do with it, you know, and it was just uh, not for me, you know, until I really felt God started to speak into my heart. And this is exactly what happened. He started to shine his light in my heart to let me understand the truth of who he was. And then I would make a decision. You know, God is an amazing God. He allows you to decide. He doesn't force. You know, we look around in our world. If people are trying to force to do something, what usually happens? They usually kick back against it, don't they? And they say, I'm, and, that, and, and, it's, and it's something that you don't want to do. But if something like this starts to shine in your heart, and God's love started to shine in my heart, and his truth started to shine in my heart, and I come to a point where I decided I decided that I was going to look into this more and that that meant that I would give my life to Jesus. 
And at age 19, I gave my life to the Lord. I decided to do that. And all of these things, this, this, this beautiful feeling came into my... I remember sitting in the, in the church service one Sunday morning about four weeks after that, and I felt this most amazing experience that, that this, this, this lightness came over me, this excitement started to burst into my heart. I'd, I'd prayed four weeks before. I knew it had happened. I knew God had saved me. I knew he'd tra- changed me and, and started to work. But this is the most amazing experience. I cannot put it into words other than I knew that God was just revealing his, starting to reveal his fullness to me. I decided. When you decide, when you decide to look into this more and accept Jesus, this is what happens. It transforms your life. It brings peace and joy and hope and assurance it surrounds us this decision to accept God into your heart and Jesus into your heart as a saviour you become surrounded by a loving family who supports you and the knowledge that when this life is over we will see Jesus and the father in heaven and receive an an eternal inheritance it brings a whole new dimension when you decide to believe in Jesus it says this, and there's, there's quite a few verses. It says in Jeremiah, it says, I have, I have plans for you. I want to tell you this morning that God has, when you decide to allow God into your heart and into your life, you know, some of these words, it's in Jeremiah, and he was talking to the people, the children of Israel, you know, but we take this verse and we say, Lord, I know you were saying that to them, but that jumps out at me and says, but Lord, you could be saying that to me, and I could be saying this to you this morning, that God has plans When you decide to follow Jesus, wow, life is transformed. And you can take all of something like this. And it says that I have plans for you, says the Lord. Plans that are good. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And in in the days when you pray, I'll listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. And I'll be found of you, says the Lord. Praise his wonderful name. When you decide to follow Jesus, your life is transformed. If you look back, and I'll say, really, I said before, what was the best decision of my life was to ask joy out. But, you know, God was working in the whole situation. And my life was changing and being transformed. And it was a decision that I was making. It's a decision that you will make. And and I could just say this as well. You know, that, that when I gave my life to the Lord and I decided that, then I handed my life to the Lord And it said, I am certain this. In Philippians, he says, I am certain that God who began a good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus returns. I am glad I decided to follow Jesus. You know, Joy was talking about old songs. Who remembers, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, that the cross before me, I have decided to follow Jesus. There is, I have decided to follow Jesus. You know, I've, I've, I've missed a part out, cause, and, and I think I might have purposely missed, missed this out, you know. But, but uh, the alternative to deciding not to follow Jesus, you know what that means, don't you? I don't have to go into that, you know, exactly. But I'd like to focus on the positive side of deciding to follow Jesus. Praise his wonderful name. I also want to, I want to remind you of this, that if you've decided to follow Jesus, then he says this in Jude. He said, Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. You know, you can argue... I was say till the cows come home. You can argue, you can debate, you, you, the atheist guy will, 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 will cast doubt on all of this, will rubbish it all, and, I, and, and, I, and I, you'll never, um, never out argue somebody like that. You'll never co- put a, an argument forward that would, that would convince them. You know, it is only when the light of the glory of God that shines in their hearts that, that makes them realize that all this philosophizing and. <clears throat> And all this delving into this stuff that tries to disprove God is, is, it will come to nothing. Because I'd rather put my trust in a God and, and read something like this that said, that glory to God who is able to keep you from falling and will present you 
We need to his glorious presence without a single... F- I'd rather have that hope in my heart this morning, wouldn't you? I'd rather have that hope in my heart that God is going to have his hand upon my life, that he's going to lead us, that he's going to give us all the promises, that he's going to transform me and, and do that. And the ultimate is that he will present me into his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, who alone is God, our saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time, in the presence and beyond all time. I really believe that once you've decided to follow Jesus, then the decisions that you'll make from that time moving forward will be in accordance to his will. And really, I, I'd started off by talking, I wanted to talk about the will of God this morning, and I'm, I'm going to sort of spread it over two weeks. I want to talk a little bit more about the will of God and how that leads us in our decisions. You know, because we, we, we're making decisions all the time. And, and sometimes we, we don't make very good ones. Uh, and that, but uh, but I, I just wanted to, to bring us to that point today where we have made that decision to follow Jesus and the benefits that come our way and the promises that are ours in the Lord. And I just praise his wonderful name. But you know, having lived <clears throat> uh, 50 years since that time when I decided to follow Jesus, I, I, can, I can give you lots and lots of testimonies about how the decisions that I have made have been influenced by the will of God through his spirit that works in my heart and leads us. And, and I just, just, I just by, by way of introduction, <clears throat> to that for next week <coughs> is that God who has been leading people in the decisions that they've made and it has impacted on the world after that so this last week I found myself in Cyprus uh, in Paphos and I've read the Acts of the Apostles many times and I knew that there was something in there but I found myself I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm sure that, that, uh, that where I am is something that's significant in the Bible. And so I, uh, I started to read. I was awake early one morning, so I read all through that area, that period of, of Acts. Where, and there was a great persecution became against the Christians. And they were scattered. And it said in, in Acts chapter 11 that they were scattered and some went here, some went there, and some went to Cyprus. And... Uh, and I thought, oh, Cyprus. And, um, and, and then I, was thinking, I started to think, so I, I, I read about it. And, and then I started to look at the missionary journeys of Paul and how he was sent uh, through, through uh, certain areas and then landed in the north of Cyprus and came down right down to Paphos. I had quite an experience with a guy who was a sorcerer there and, uh, and then set sail and went round to um, the Antioch. Yeah, anyway. But, but the funny thing is, is this, right? The funny thing is, is this, is that I got up. I was in bed, it was early in the morning, and I got up. I haven't told you this. And there was a veranda in our room. And I got out, opened the curtains, and I went and stood on the veranda, and I thought, I wonder if Paul walked down here when he was with Barnabas. And I had quite an exciting thrill in my heart to, to think, because they sailed here to, to Paphos, which is where I was, uh, and that. And, and if you just go back a little bit... Um, there was, um, I'm just trying to remember now where it was. Okay, I, I can't, I'm not going to read it. I'll, ju- I'll relate it to you because I and all that. But there, there, was, there was a spirit of God was moving. And there was a guy called Agabus, right, who was, who was spirit. And, and he went and they met together and they were praying. And this, this, this guy <coughs> said, um, Need, need to, to separate, I'm, I'm getting this right now, because I read it all and I, I can't remember it all in detail. But he was led by the Spirit to say, separate, but he was still called Saul at the time, Saul and Barnabas, and I want them to set off on, on, on a mission and start to tell people about, about this salvation and Jesus and everything. And so you read that, and what, you know, that God spoke to them, but they decided to obey God. And, and I'm, I'm amazed by this. That in all the all the spirit all the, the missionary journeys of, of, of Paul became uh, it was Saul became Paul, he walked 
at least 10,000 miles in his, in his trips and sailed. And, that, and because he decided to obey the will of God. So in our decisions that, that, that we make, uh, and all that, moving into now the part that we're now believers, we decided to follow Jesus, we decided to believe in Jesus, and, uh, and we now want to live within the will of God. And that will then mean that we decide to follow the will of God. And so I just want to say this this morning, you know, that you decided to be here. Thanks for coming. You've decided to, for Jesus to be in your heart. I really believe that within the will of God, if you will decide to listen to the will of God and obey the will of God, then your life will be changed and transformed even more. Those guys' lives were changed and transformed. But not only that, is that the people who they were sent to, their lives were changed and transformed because they decided to obey the will of God. And as we went round Cyprus, you see the, it's, it's a Greek Orthodox church and everything, but you see the, 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 the results thousands of years later of what those people did. I, I want to be in the will of God. Do you want to be in the will of God? Would you, would you agree? And I'll pray in a moment. Will you decide with me today to say, Lord, I'm going to decide to hear your voice. And when I hear your voice, I will decide to obey it. When I hear what you want me to do, Lord, I will do it. And you know, God moves in so many. I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit more next week about how you can make some of these decisions. But I, I really believe, you know, that, that we're just starting uh, putting down a bit of a foundation here today for us to hear what God would be saying so that we can decide to walk in his will. We can decide to follow what he wants us to do. We can decide that, that we will be fulfilling that great commission of bringing people into his kingdom. So let's pray together now and just ask the Lord to, to be speaking into it. Let, let a little bit more of that glory shine into your heart this morning. Let, let something of, of what God would be saying. You know, the Bible is full of people who heard what God was saying and they had to decide to say, yes, Lord, I will, I will do that. Yes, Lord, I will follow that. Yes, Lord, I will leave this and do that. Yes, Lord, I, 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 will, I will leave my, my, my home here or whatever and set off and do whatever you want me to do. Or I will change that, Lord. I'll decide. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you shone your light into our hearts and it illuminated something in us. And in response to that, we decided. We decided to allow you into our lives. And Lord, we can now say, Lord, you've transformed us. You've given us more than we could ever ask or imagine. Your word, Lord, has become something that has, that has illuminated our whole path, our whole life, our direction, the things that we do, the things that we say in the places that we go. Lord, you have changed us completely, and I thank you. Thank you for that this morning. And Lord, I, I pray that I will never make decisions, Lord, that, that, that contradict your will. <coughs> or lead me to a place that you wouldn't want me to be. Lord, I pray this morning that, that as we start to consider this a little bit more, as we think about it, as we pray about it, as we maybe wait upon you, as we read your word, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will lead us to the right decisions that we make as we take a step forward. Lord, we, we want to walk where you want us to walk. Lord, if, we are, if we're in a different place today, that, that when we've decided that we'll walk our own way, Lord, I pray that your spirit will speak again into our hearts today and that we will decide to listen and hear and take a step back and get back onto that place where you want us to be. I believe, Lord, that you've got a pathway for each one of us to take. I believe, Lord, that you reveal, Lord, in our hearts through your word, through, through preaching, through singing, through any way, you reveal to us, Lord, how we should be or, what we're, or even direct us away from something and we make the decision to continue with it and pursue the wrong things. Lord, I'm praying this morning, Lord, that you'll speak into our hearts again and we will respond, Lord, and, and decide to say, yes, Lord, I will hear what you will say and I will get back into that path that you want me to be walking in. Lord, I, I, I want to seek your will. Lord, I want the decisions that I make to be, Lord, the right decisions that will please you. Lord, if we've made decisions that haven't pleased you, Lord, I pray you'll take us back to the point where we can get back into the right place with you. Lord, that we'll listen to what your spirit would say. We'll read your word. We'll know it all comes together in so many different ways. But Lord, I pray this morning 
that will not be afraid to decide to do the right thing before you, that we will not be afraid to decide to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, that we'll, Lord, not be, not be stubborn, Lord, and, and still persist and press on, but, Lord, we'll listen to what your Spirit says and decide to be humble before you, listen to what you say, and then take the right steps to go forward in your name. Amen. Amen. Right. I think if we could do a song now, um, and we'll get the children to come back down, and then Bob will lead us in communion. Um, if that's okay with the musicians. Because Bob just confused us all by changing it round, you see. If it's all right with you, we're going to sing Holy Forever again, because um, I always think it's good to sort of like, we, you listen to it once, and you hear it, you think, yeah, yeah, I'm just getting into that, and then it ends, and then, so we're going to do it again, and so we can really learn it, and really praise God to it. <coughs> and then we'll take communion together. <coughs> Shall we stand? and generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions your name stands above them all and the angels cry all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. If you have been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, Sing the song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever to the Lamb, and the angels cry. Oh, creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your people say. Above them all, all 
of thrones and dominions of powers and possessions your name stands above them all your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and possessions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy. Having that love of God in your heart, is there? There's nothing that confirms the truth of who he is. You know, sometimes we may have decided to follow something and found it not as good as you thought it was. But you know, the day I decided to follow Jesus, he just got better every day. Better and better and better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we can come around this table this morning. That we've been brought together and brought as a body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the way you explain that to us, that we're a body, 
and that we're going to partake of your body and we've become one in you. Lord, what an amazing understanding and explanation you've given us of this. And we're part of you and you're part of us. And Lord, it all just works in our hearts this morning to confirm the truth of who you are. And Lord, the warmth that glows in my heart this morning of being part of your body, part of your family. Lord, there's nowhere else I can find that. There's nowhere else that you can find that the love of God has reached into you. So true, so real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you never let us down. You've never let us down. Your love has been with us from the moment we decided to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. We take this this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll be speaking new things into us, fresh things, reassurances. Replace, Lord, maybe the sadness with your joy. Maybe replace the uncertainty with assurance. Lord, and where we've got our eyes looked at the wrong things and maybe the world's events around us, Lord, that you can, Lord, put that peace and hope back in place because, Lord, you're our rock. You're our Redeemer. You're our Saviour. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's take this table together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you mm. for that. Thank you for the fact that the, the uh, sins of each one of us has been wiped away mm. at the sacrifice that you made at Golgotha that day. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
uh, just as we prepare to take this, th this is just ordinary bread, you know, and it's ordinary juice. There's no, uh, but it's it's what it means. It's an emblem. It's a symbol, and the 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 the, the juice, the, the blood is the blood of Jesus who washed away, and and Viv just prayed that, and so let me remind you this morning that this blood of Jesus washes and cleanses us from sin. And the devil would love to tell you that you're not worthy and that you maybe have failed or maybe that, that you've took your eyes. But let, let this be a time this morning where, where as we take this, this cup this morning and say, Lord, wash me again. Wash me clean again. And don't allow the devil to rob you of a single day or thought of your own, or maybe a potential unworthiness. But Lord, you can stand here this morning and, and say, thank you, Jesus, that it's through your blood that I am washed clean. And I receive that today and I accept it and I allow it to be cleansing me from within. And then that maybe there's a new start to be had. Maybe there's a fresh impetus. Maybe there's some fresh energy to be birthed today in, in what God would do. But, you know, let God wash and cleanse and bring you back before him this morning. And he does that as we can take this together. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
You say it is uh, on Friday. It is the funeral of June's daughter. It's here at church. It's one o'clock. It's it's been put out as a plus one on a on a but we want to correct that. It's one o'clock here at the church. And June wants everybody to feel welcome to come on that. And let's let's as a church support June on Friday. If you're able to be here on Friday to support uh, and uh, then June would value that very much. And that's so one o'clock here on Friday, and then there's the the committal at the at the uh, cemetery. At, at, uh, is it one, is it two? And and then back here after was it two thirty? We're back two thirty here backwards, after for where we'll have some food and everybody's welcome to come for that. So please support June on on Friday. We're praying for her as well in this in this week as well, and the family Adam, uh, and and the whole family. And I, and I just had a sense this morning you know, that, that God could, through his spirit, do something very special here on Friday on that. So support June on Friday for that. Let's sing, sing one more song. And a uh, bit different this morning, a bit of different uh, format, but I pray that, you know, God's blessed us this morning and we, we are going to be uh, spoken to, I believe, you know, through his spirit, you know, and let's be praying this week. You know, and uh, and I have some more to share about that, and it's quite important as believers to be walking in the will of God and decisions that we're making. That so, let's be praying about that as well, and let's sing this last song. Like to stand and join us, please. I was buried. Shame. You could carry that kind of weight. It was my too. Till I met you.
we just pray Lord we just thank you Lord for that day Lord we made that decision to let you into our lives Lord we thank you you came in that day Lord and you've never left us since Lord you stay with us day and night Lord you're always there morning afternoon night Lord and whatever situation we're in Lord we thank you that you're there Lord we just thank you that we made that decision for you Lord and we say thank you this morning for all that you've done for each one of us Lord and we thank you for your word this morning Lord and we just pray that for thank you for the offering we've had just now Lord that we use Lord for your glory Lord thank you Lord Amen. I don't know if you've got any birthdays. Well, I've got Melissa. Pardon? Yeah, I'll do them. Yeah, do you want to come and do them? Is Melissa here? No, she's upstairs. Oh. Tell her she has to come down, will you, James? I'm going to sing happy birthday to her. And your mum will come and do the notice while we wait. She should have come down, shouldn't she? She's hiding. Hiding. It's a busy week. I love it when it looks like that, don't you? I remember Gavin once saying, I don't know if everyone remember Gavin, uh, his idea that the church would be open every single day. That was his idea. Yeah. And I think we got there that next week, didn't you? Um, so on Monday, it's the slow cook and the next step class. We did a catch up last week and if anyone wants to know about it, Viv came to it, but I think it was a really great catch-up session. Food was good. Food was really, really good. Um, our Jacqueline's cooking is pretty good, actually, to be fair. <laughs> I'm a sister. I'm not allowed to be nice. But um, it was really good. It was a really great night, mix of people. And, yeah, I think it was a really good practice for me, anyway, to um, start it. Next step is our um, Christian part of the course. Um and yeah, I think it went down well. I think I was a bit unsure, but I think everyone gave me some good feedback after it. So it was really great. So we have got this course for the next six months. So if you know anybody who'd like to join the course, it's only two weeks and it's for two hours. Um, people who haven't got a slow cooker will be given a slow cooker and they'll also get the food as well for free. Um, so please, if you know anybody or you'd like to join us, please let me know. We can put you down on the list. Then coffee morning and prayer. Um, I think I counted 23 last week. Yeah, we were busy. About 23, we had to get more seats out. It was a really great mix of people. Please come and join us on a Tuesday. And a really great prayer as well. Um, and then on Wednesday, it's packed lunches. We're back here, 12 to 2. And I think we're supposed to be decorating cakes as well. But, yeah, I think that. I think I've got a load of cake mixers, so I think we're decorating cakes. Um, and then it's fellowship evening here at half seven. Yep. Viv's doing the Bible study. That's great. And then Belly's at quarter to um, one and half past two. Um, please come and join us. A great mix of people. We were really busy last week, weren't we? I think we're going to be busier this week. Um, 
But if you know anybody or you'd like to come and join us, please come and join us. Friday is the funeral. I think you want to do it as a celebration as well, don't you? Um, in, the evening we, in the afternoon, we're going to have a nice afternoon tea and um, a bit of a celebration. So please come and join us if you can. Um, and I am looking for a few volunteers, Del. Are you? Um, anybody who may be able to help on Friday as well, afternoon, please come and if you're willing to help, please ask me. If you're not, come and tell me. And then Saturday we're off and then we're back here on the Sunday. Um, through popular demand, we are now starting a beginner's Bible study and it is for the very foundations of, of Christianity. It's very basic, it's going down to the roots, is that the way you're saying it? And it is Viv and Jackie who will be doing it. It's a week on Wednesday. If anybody would like to put the name down, please come and um, put the names down. And everyone is welcome, more than welcome, anybody can come. If you want to know more about it, speak to Viv and Jackie, because they'll be running it. Okay. It is at, it's half past nine till half past ten. Early morning. You, te you said the time, it weren't me. I was going to give you a line. Decision. Um, half nine till half ten. We will be running this course for the next six months with the slow cooker course. So if you can't make it to this one, please come and join us on the other ones as well. Okay, that's fine, I'm going. So it'll be good to see you on Wednesday night. Um, Viv will be sharing this Bible study, so it should be good. Um, and we've got a birthday here. Uh, it's Evelyn's, but Evelyn's not here, so we'll try maybe next week if she's here next week. Go on, Melissa. She's saying she's nine, she's not nine, are you? <laughs> So Granddad winding her up, isn't it? Is it eleven now? It's eleven now, yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Hey! 